This is Dolany TV, ladies and gentlemen, a 4-3 overtime final, only one finger snap this evening, and that is, in essence, very disappointing to me, you know, but at the same result, I knew what I was expecting going in, so how how disappointed can I be really realistically, right? It's 4-3, the Oilers get a point, that's the key, right? It's the math was, the Oilers have to go... 11 and 9 the rest of the way home to make the playoffs. Well, technically speaking, now we have to get 10 and 8 and 1. That actually technically maths out more correct. So the Oilers go 10, 8, and 1 the rest of the way home. We get ourselves a chance to get this job done. So hopefully, hopefully we can get something done along the way of uh, talking playoffs. And as I think. Uh, I think Kevin Quinn said it's going to be an absolute race dash, mad dash to the finish. I don't know how he worded it. I'm trying to word it way different than he is and blame me for that. But you know what? All in all, good game. Solid game for several reasons. And I'll break down number one reason. The new addition scored. Mike Green didn't look fantastic, but Mike Green did what a third pairing defenseman does. Had one glaring error, had one glaring excellent play. That's what a third-pairing defenseman does on a good night, usually. Technically speaking, we don't expect much more out of Matt Benning, so why should we expect much more out of Mike Green? But a fantastic pass up the middle to Spring McDavid on a breakaway that didn't get ended in a penalty call. It was ridiculous. Ref should have called that, and I think, again, the Oilers get the no calls against the Ducks, and it's a little embarrassing at this point that it keeps happening, but at the end of the day, we know what's going on, we know what to expect, so to complain about it, it's just like beating your head off a concrete wall. Why do you keep doing it? It's just dumb. Just let it keep happening, I guess you could say. So, Ducks win in overtime. Kind of a weak overtime goal. It's on a power play. Connor McDavid gets a weak call. Why am I talking about the refs again? Let's review this. Sonny Milano gets his first as a duck. He'll finish it off tonight for us. But first as a duck, unassisted. Tough giveaway. Tough, tough giveaway. And brutal. And then Nicholas Delorier gets another one. Tough play again. Those first two goals, very tough. The Oilers played a tough first period. But end of the day, they had all jumbled up lines. Defense is a mess without... Clefbaum and Benning back there. Chris Russell didn't expect back there too. So I understand it was a trap game and the Oilers were in a trap situation and we got trapped in that first period down 2-0. Now that said, 2-0 against the Ducks, I told you all stream. Not scary, not scary. And I think that's a big reason why we had 91 people in the stream at the end is simply put, there was really no panic. I just shifted the stream around. Guys got distracted and... The Oilers end up tying this one, actually. They get a goal from Tyler Ennis, a fantastic backhand top cheddar cheese tip from Tyler Ennis on a pass from Anders Athanasiu. I'm still going to struggle with that. Double A. And, of course, Connor McDavid getting the secondary assist. That was a fantastic, fantastic, fantastic play. Then Drysaddle on the power play from Nugent Hopkins and McDavid. That's McDavid's 55th assist of the year. And beauty, beauty, beauty. He shoots the puck. Blocked to Nuge, cross to dry, patent and shot from the other side. Bang, back of the net. That's a goal, ties it at two. Well, eight minutes later, Adam Henrique goes out there. Again, I honestly don't remember this one as well as I should, but Adam Henrique scores a goal. What do you do? It's 3 2. Danton Heinen gets his first point as a duck. Josh Manson gets a point, and we are. Down 3-2. Then Andres Athanasiu. Well, light me up. Three minutes later, Hashalia. Your first goal as an Oiler. Your second point already. Tyler Ennis's second point. And Connor McDavid, ladies and gentlemen, his third point of the night. 56 assists on the year. He goes from 53 to 56. Jumps right back into that old scoring race. And my goodness, what a light me up go for Connor McDavid tonight. The Oilers, however... Get to overtime. Connor McDavid gets called on a guy that's already falling down. Make of it what you will. Maybe he wasn't. Technically speaking, he probably wasn't. Maybe he was. I, I don't know. Blame the refs. Blame Don't blame the refs. It's the Ducks. What do you do? 17 is all I have to say. 17. Maybe something about playoffs. I, I don't know. 
realistically, it is at the end of the day what it is. I know what the comments are going to be. Sonny Milano on a 4-on-3 power play in overtime. 205 in. Scores from Henrique and Getzlav. What are you going to do? End of the day, how about we do this? End of the day, that's a point. That's what it comes down to. End of the day, the Oilers get a point. So what does that do for them in the division? That ties them with the Vancouver Canucks for 74 points. Problem is our row. And it's actually regulation wins this year. And I think the Oilers own this stat much better. But the regulation and overtime wins this year. The Ducks down there at 20. They get their regulation overtime win. The Oilers, Canucks, and Golden Knights tied at 31. Separated by two points. The Canucks at 74. Us at 74. And then the Vegas Golden Knights at 76. 70 points for Arizona. 72 for Calgary. So it's a six-point difference to be in the playoff race in the Pacific, realistically. And, of course, in the Central, it's now a three-way tie for the third wild card spot with Chicago and Minnesota breathing down a little bit more than it is in the Pacific. Minnesota much more in the hunt than Chicago is. Minnesota at 67 points. This said, Vegas on a five-game plus heater coming into tomorrow night's game. That's going to be interesting to see what happens there. And of course, the Oilers now two, or actually two, one and two in their last five games. It's been a while since we've had something like that, so it's going to be interesting to see what the Edmonton Oilers do to pull off a big time go there. That said, honestly, Ducks didn't shoot enough, but I think Mike Smith had a solid night. I, I really think Mike Smith, again, did as much as Mike Smith could do in a game in which the Oilers didn't play a whole heck of a lot of good defense. And not that it was really the new guys. It was just... Legison had a rough go. Green was all right. I, I, I'm honestly going to say Chase on had a very rough game. I think in the live stream, I was saying Chase on's name a lot more than I should have for a guy like Chase on, especially because it was a lot of negative stuff. John Gibson, 906, kept the Ducks in it all night, gets the win, giving up three goals against. Mike Smith, four goals against, an 810 save percentage in extra hockey, but realistically, I, I, don't, I don't think Mike Smith was that awful. I really don't. But, again, four goals against, not going to get the job done either. Oilers could have simply won this one with only three goals against if the penalty hadn't been called in overtime. So that said, you look at it one way, you look at it the other way, you break it down two ways to Sunday, and you say neither way is good because both ways a point got away from us tonight, and that's at the end of the night what sucks about this one. Let me recap the stats for you. Simply put, the Oilers had... 32 shots on goal, the Ducks 21. So our defense was awful, but still very good. And you know, I'm going to break down some stats, and it's going to sound stupid. Ducks out hit us 27 to 16. We out face off the Ducks 35 to 22. 6 6 the penalty minutes. So that makes sense, right? They counted the Connor McDavid penalty. Yes, they did. 12 9 the giveaways for the Ducks, and 6 5 the takeaways for the Ducks. So the Oilers had realistically a. What difference here? Ducks plus minus on the takeaways, giveaways. They had six plus six, right? Six giveaways technically. And takeaways for the Oilers, they had four. So the Oilers were plus two in the giveaway to takeaway category. And somehow mathematically, somehow mathematically the Oilers lose this game. Ducks block 16 shots. I think that's end of the day what it comes down to is the fact that the Ducks blocked probably three or four very, very dangerous Leon Dreisettle chances that could have changed this hockey game a hundred times over. Like in that first period, we were down 2 nothing. It could have been 2-2 if not for Leon Dreisettle hitting a post, Leon Dreisettle doing this, Leon Dreisettle doing that. And end of the day, it's tough. I stayed up this late to watch the Oilers lose in overtime. That's the tough part about it. I'm going to stay up a lot later to get this video up. And Mr. Orange, you can see there, he's a little past out. I'm going to drop down the scoreboard and just watch you be able to say good night, crashed out. That's what I dream of being in about 15 minutes here like Mr. Orange. Guys, I'm Tyson. This is Dolany TV. Thank you so much to everybody that hung out in the live stream. That was an absolutely unreal live stream for what it ended up being up end of the day, I did not realize we had that many people, that much 
tonight, but it was a fantastic go, and I appreciate that very, very much. So, guys, it's been an unreal week leading up. We've got the Vegas Golden Knights tomorrow night. A lot of Oilers fans should be interested. A lot of Vegas Golden Knights should be interested. And, of course, it should be another interesting live stream. I'll only be live for the first two periods of hockey that night because, well, to go with third, everybody else sleeping in the house. Doesn't work. Guys, I'm Tyson. This is stolen in TV. Sonny Milano wins in overtime. There you go. Ducks fans, don't say I didn't say it. I will catch you in the next one.